Welcome back to the 127 Fit Podcast. Today's guest is the general manager and a partner at Good Vibe Mafia. Today's guest is Haley Sorensen. Haley, I want to welcome you to the 127 Fit Podcast. Yes, thank you so much. I am so grateful to be here. For sure. So Haley, we're just going to kind of like jump into what I like to call a conversational warm up. I've got four questions that I like to um, ask all of my guests. The first question that I have for you is, how do you start your, <clears throat> how do you start your day? Do you have a specific morning routine or morning ritual that you like to stick to on most mornings? Yeah, I feel like in the last year, I've really honed in on my personal routine and in the morning, it all revolves around self-care and healing and restoration. And it's really important for me because every day it's just a, a culmination of so much work because right. there's three different businesses running simultaneously. And so for me, it's so key to take that time in the morning um, to stretch and incorporate CBD into my my stretching by using the body bars that we have. Um, and then I also just like to make tea and cool. water my plants and be with my cat and sit in the sunshine. So it's this whole goddess, self-love, self-care thing that I do in the morning. But in the midst of all that, I'm also catching up on all the emails and opening up all the Instagram pages, catching up on messages and posting and getting my mind ready to show up at the shop. Right. <laughs> and so... It's a beautiful time for me to catch up and be grateful and present mm. in the morning. So, um, you know, this uh, concept of self-care is something that is uh, very uh, pervasive. Like with all of my guests that come on to, to the podcast, like self-care mm. um, and, and things like that, that kind of that self-awareness as well is, is, is just a, a reoccurring theme on the podcast. So for you personally, Haley, in regards to the self care, like just how valuable and how important is that to you? Obviously I know it's, it's very valuable. It's very important because it's, it's what you kind of start your day off with, mm -hmm. but just maybe how did you get into that self care? How did you come to that awakening or realization that that's something that you need to start your day off with? Yeah, for me, I think it's the, dedication to being a business owner and mm. to being an entrepreneur because I'm I'm working on a computer a lot I'm using my hands to make posts and text a lot I'm typing a lot and sitting a lot and so that's all stuff that will kink your muscles up and mm -hmm. create tension and um, for me my muscles will get really tight anyways and so yeah. if I'm just uh, sitting around and prolonging that it just gets worse and so I have to be proactive about mm. it and I fell upon this amazing CBD business yeah. two years ago and so it's a no-brainer for me to incorporate CBD into my practice every morning and so it just creates great reasoning for me to stretch every day or make it a goal because it's not easy to do it every single day and I've been on a good roll right now I'm really cool. proud of myself and right now I feel at the peak of <laughs> my fitness journey because mm -hmm. I'm really trying to think about it and be intentional and because we have a shop and we work with so many different brands. I've recently discovered Rad Roller, and they're mm. a company that makes wonderful uh, muscle uh, tension relief tools. And so I want to teach classes that are using those tools to help our bodies. And so I have to basically challenge myself to use it every day because how can I teach people about it if I don't dedicate myself sure. to it and that's what I do to everything that I'm passionate about I dedicate myself completely mm. or try to and so it's all of a, a snow of ball effect because the stretching and self-connection in the morning leads to production and radiation in the daytime mm. yeah. because I 
am a sunshine, you know, like I uh -huh. am a ball of sunshine for my community. And if I am at my peak of like feeling good, then it's so easy to, to talk to customers through the day and to get through the emails yeah. and to take the pictures and do all the things that it requires to run our business day to day. And if I don't have that energy, then I just feel really unproductive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I hate being unproductive because there's so much to do. There's Absolutely. like a huge list that never ends. It's always, something's always adding to it as you erase it, so it never goes away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful, all right, that's, that's, that's very thorough and I, I appreciate <laughs> you sharing that because um, again, from my perspective, um, self-care is really uh, where it all begins in regards to life because if, um, like I believe we're here to, to love each other, we're here to serve each other, we're here to help each other out, and I cannot do those things personally if my cup is empty. So mm -hmm. like I need to fill my cup up first, which that's kind of where that self-care comes in. So then that I so then I can fill up other people's cups. So yeah. I, I appreciate the thoroughness on that. And I had one more thing I wanted sure. to say, and I really love that it's a reoccurring pattern you're finding throughout mm -hmm. the people you're interviewing, mm -hmm. because I think it's just a common factor within leaders. Because if you're gonna be a leader and an entrepreneur who's really on top of their game, mm -hmm. then you're taking care of yourself. Mm. And <laughs> so that's awesome. That means that everybody who you've talked with is actually about it because they're sure. taking care of themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, I mean, the guests that, that I've had the opportunity to bring onto the podcast, I mean, they're, they're, they're high, high level, high performing people. And it's, it is really um, fascinating to see um, a lot of the same things in regards to self care and just kind of like mindset, things like that. They, they continue to come up with these people and it's, it's because of the, the type of individuals that they are and they're striving to be. So with that being said, Haley, uh, the second question that I have for you, um, do you have a favorite book or book that you like to gift often? I feel like the book that I always recommend to people and the book that changed my perspective and put mm -hmm. a new lens on life was be Here Now by Ram Das. Okay. And it's such a fun read. It's unusual and unlike anything you've ever experienced out of a book, but it contains such wisdom. And I just remember it being so profound. The whole experience was so eye-opening for me. And then I was able to take life by the balls and just like really get after it after yeah. that. I just, it made me believe in the purpose of why like if we're here and we feel something in our heart and we mm -hmm. feel that fire and passion burning inside of you that's what existence is about and if you right. feel that follow that because not everybody feels that sensation mm -hmm. and not and life doesn't always bring that about for everyone and so I read that book at a really like important time in my life because I was confused and needing universal guidance on how to proceed about my life <laughs> right right yeah and that book for sure brought the answers and i love recommending it for anybody else to read <laughs> cool yeah that that book's come up before on on the podcast with uh at least one one other guest now you know i i just i want to ask you what's i, I it sounds like there were a, a lot of um different things that that book um you know presented to you but what's like one, what's like kind of that one takeaway from that book that you wouldn't mind sharing for yourself personally uh, with, the, with the listeners? Like what's that one takeaway that you would like to share with the listeners from, from that book specifically? Yeah, the one takeaway, and it's funny because it's the title of the book, mm -hmm. but it's really about that present moment of being here now where we're at because it's so easy and what I would find myself doing a lot is I would grasp the thoughts of the past or um, scenarios of the past. Some people find themselves caught out way far out in the future and they're mm -hmm. not being present. And <laughs> either way, it can cause suffering or it can cause a lack of progression. And so that book helped me realize that in order to obtain the most power we have, we mm -hmm. have to be present because that's the vibration. That's where For we're sure. at to attract the reality we want to manifest mm -hmm. and so if we're not present we can't 
really ride that wave. We keep missing the wave. For sure. So being present, being here now, that is important. So, <laughs> so just kind of like branching off from that a, a little bit. So when you are like living your life, you're living, you know, um, your, your, your powerful version how, and, and those, because we all have random thoughts popping up in our head, like mm -hmm. 24, 7, 365. Like that's just a part of, you know, us being humans. It's a part of our species. Like we have all these thoughts. Yeah. And sometimes these thoughts can, like you had mentioned, they can pull us away from the, the present. So how do you, um, or what is the practice that, that you have in your life, Haley, to really um, keep yourself present and, and overcome some of those maybe negative thoughts or distracting thoughts. Yeah, it's just acknowledging what feels best for your mm. body and for your being. Okay. And sometimes you have to sit in the sorrow and, and, and feel it because that's mm. a part of humanity as well. And if we weren't in touch with all of our the emotions on the scale, then that we wouldn't be human. <laughs> right, right. You know, there's so many emotions we're able to feel, so it's good to have sadness, and it's good to have happiness, and mm. then it's good to figure out where you work best on the scale. And for me, I found that life works best when I'm in my happiest, on the happiest side of the scale, and that's when the manifestations roll in heaviest, they come in most spontaneous, or it's almost like serendipitous, you know? Mm. you I expect crazy random beautiful things to happen in my life because of the past Be but i know that i got myself into that place by repeating the pattern of being happy <laughs> okay really really happy or doing the things that make me happy focusing on that feeling that sets you on fire yeah a majority of the time personal choice that feels good to me i mm. like that sensation of life feeling like that and so i call it in often yeah yeah so before we <clears throat> turned on the mic, we uh, had just uh, chatted for a minute about uh, the, the law of attraction because I'm, I'm a very firm believer of like whatever I, I personally put out into the world, like I'm gonna attract that into my life. Um, is that something that you also believe in? And if so, just maybe would you share a little bit about how you've experienced that law in your life personally? Mm -hmm. I think that it began when I was 17 okay, and that's when I first started listening to things about law of attraction and I read The Secret and then okay. I started hearing things from a lady named Abraham, Abraham Hicks and then I <laughs> joined a speech club in high school and it gave me the platform to start speaking about these things mm. I was learning. I was so passionate about The Secret and that movie in that book they hone in on the key essentials of manifestation and how to attract the best reality whether it's business your personal relationships creative whatever it's all the same principle mm. and so when i was 17 i would give that speech in our competitions and i did really well that's what got me really interested into in public speaking mm. and then but i would do it with a script and I would practice that script and it was like a refined version, but it was practiced, but mm. I would place well with it. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I went to college and then did that experience and I realized a lot of stuff about that and I know that's probably coming up, so I'll just <laughs> we'll yeah, get yeah. to that. Uh -huh. But then the experience after college brought me to public speaking okay. and I knew in my soul, I was like, I'm gonna be a public speaker when I grow up. and. I met a man named Chris Spivey, and uh -huh. he, at the time, he was like, well, if you're going to be a public speaker when you grow up, have you ever been to Toastmasters? I was like, no. <laughs> and he was like, well, if you really are about the public speaking journey, then uh -huh. show up at this place at 6.45 a.m. Thursday morning, and we'll, we'll see you there. And I'm yeah. like, oh, snap, that's uh -huh. early. <laughs> And it changed my life. <laughs> I've been going for almost two years now. Awesome. Yeah. And it is the one place that helps you take the paper away and be able to speak and, mm. and in practice in a place where you're challenged. It's right, scary. Right. It's still, even to this day, two years in, and I'm super involved with the club. I still get butterflies about the impromptu 30-second pull-ups thingy out of, or like a piece of paper out of a hat and be like, oh, 
speak about this for 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so. That's beautiful. So that, that you know, just, t- uh, you know, going back to the, the law of attraction, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's, it, it, it truly is like whatever you're putting out into the world, like that, that is going to come in into your life. So like you kind of started to fa- find this, you know, interest and maybe a, a bit of a passion, like in high school in regards to, you know, um, you know, speech and speaking and, and all these things. And then as you uh, began to, to progress in your life, like, you know, there was more opportunities that presented itself to you because that's what you were interested in. That's what you were kind of putting out into the world. So, mm-hmm. so that's, that's, that's super cool. And I, I just, you know, for the listeners out there, I just want to encourage you, you know, in regards to the law of attraction, it's like, again, like I, I can't stress it enough. Like whatever you, whatever energy, however you want to word it, there's, I think multiple words that you could use, but, um, just in, in this context, whatever energy you are, you know, putting out into the world, that's the energy that you're going to get back. So if you're always negative, if you're always giving in to negative thoughts and feeding yourself negativity, that's, what's going to come into your life and, and vice versa. So I just want to encourage you listeners again, whatever energy you're uh, putting out into the world, that's what you're going to receive. So we, we should be, uh, very in tune and aware of the energy that we're putting out there. So, um, Haley, the third question that I have for you, and, and this could be in this season of life, or it could maybe be from a previous season of life. It's, it's your choice, um, in, in, re- in regards to how you want to kind of take this question, but is there a favorite quote, mantra, or word that you have? And again, it could be something presently, or it could be something from the past. Yeah, there is one quote, and I obtained it within the in the last two years, and it came from Todd, who is my business partner yep. and the CEO of our business. Mm-hmm. And he, his mom would use this quote about cleaning their house, uh-huh. <laughs> but it carried through and then carried through once again. But it's the difference between good and great is a little extra effort. Mm. And I'm sure Jonda wasn't the first person to say that, right, but I'll right, give her right. creds for that one. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and it's such a good one. I think about it, it rings in my head all the time when I'm, you know, answering emails at 9.30 p.m. for some reason, you know, sitting in the shop. I'm thinking about that quote because it's serious. I could leave at seven or I could leave at eight when we close. But it's just like, I need that extra hour and a half to get that stuff done that I need to be caught up. Right, right. And that's the difference between good and great. And I'm always going to strive for great because beyond great, that's what I'm striving for. So if I'm not doing great, then how am I ever going to get past that? <laughs> for sure, for sure. So what, uh, what does greatness what what is what does that conjure up within you when you when you say like you're striving for for greatness or you're striving to be great because that that can be you know a, a pretty general term right mm-hmm. but for you personally Haley what what does that conjure up within you when you think about being great or or greatness yeah it's hard to define what greatness is by anybody else's mm. standard but I know what greatness feels like for myself and when it when I'm leaving the office feels like I'm walking off the court and I know that I either did my best or I did somewhat good or I didn't do good at all, you know, and there's days where I don't hit it. There's days where I leave and my feeling is like, damn, I got a lot of stuff to do or dang, I didn't do, you know, I I can catch myself in those moments where I'm like not into it, not doing work, super sidetracked. Uh I can get caught up in spirals of of nonsense <laughs> for sure we all we all can it's, and it's easy my to do. work environment is also its own spiral because it's so much creativity and so mm. much room to just play like i want to make jewelry all day long and play with beads and like paint and do some stuff like that but i have to find a balance for it because if i did all that all day long then i didn't answer emails i didn't get closer to making a, a sale or right. finding an account or posting on our platforms and whatnot so it's a whole a whole crazy balance (laughs) Mm -hmm. so so for for you again like you said 
uh, you know, that feeling of greatness or, or being great, it's like walking off of a court. So I'm, I'm assuming you're kind of referring to like some sort of like athletic court, like maybe a, a basketball court or volleyball court or something. Is that kind of what you're, yeah, you're referring to? I, okay. Yeah, for sure. And we, our business uses sports analogies a yeah. lot. And no, they're powerful. Yeah. It's really helpful. Yeah, they're powerful. Mm -hmm. And I was really involved in sports my whole life. So okay. they apply <laughs> really cool. well to cool. me. And it just makes sense to think of our team and like that, like a like a functioning sports team, and mm -hmm. everybody has their role and their position, mm -hmm. and they need to practice it and do it. And or we also compare ourselves to a band because everybody's playing their own instrument, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's just them doing a solo, or sometimes it's the whole crew being synchronized together, and we practice for it or we wing it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it can work in I so like many it. different ways. So that's kind of how it works for us. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right, so to wrap up kind of the um, conversational warm-up, do you have a favorite or most listened to podcast? Basically, anything by Abraham Hicks. Okay. And it's weird because I should probably familiarize myself with more inspirational humans, <laughs> but she's just my go-to. She's mm -hmm. the mantra source, mm -hmm. and... I just really love her interpretation because it's all the same thing and maybe her podcasts aren't necessarily super business and entrepreneurial inclined and I look to Gary Vee for okay. those um, insights yep. but she, Abraham Hicks will provide the best insight for me to get aligned in that fiery place in my soul and then from there it's like okay I found the passion and the purpose and then I move forward and so I'll fill myself up with so much wisdom from her and then I'll take away enough where I'm like I don't need to listen to this and four months will pass by For or sure. something I'll be yeah. running my businesses mm -hmm. using the wisdom I obtained and then now I'm seeking more so it comes mm -hmm. in waves and I wish it didn't work like that for me I wish I always was in a book yeah, yeah. and seeking wisdom but there's a list of so many things that go on mm -hmm. <laughs> or that need to happen and the, I'm always caught up doing something where it's like the 20 books I have on my counter never get <laughs> read, yeah, yeah. but there's always an intention to expand my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, one of the greatest ways to, you know, expand our knowledge is just through life experience, right? So you are experiencing life fully and uh, you're, you're learning a lot. So I think, you know, it's great to obviously read, it's great to listen to podcasts, but I believe the, the most important, the most powerful, the most valuable, you know, way to gain uh, knowledge, quote unquote, is, is just to live life, right? Because I firmly believe that life is, is the greatest teacher mm -hmm. and life provides the greatest lessons if we're, we're op open to them. So yeah. that's, that's super cool. All right, so you've kind of alluded a little bit to um, a little bit of your, your, your background and stuff. You mentioned sports and things like that, but we're just going to kind of take a little bit of a dive into your backstory, um, kind of your upbringing. So if you don't mind, uh, you know, Haley, sharing with myself and the listeners, where did you grow up? Um, kind of what did those earlier years look like uh, for you? Um, just kind of talk about maybe the family dynamics, siblings, things like that. Again, you've already mentioned sports. So let's just talk about the importance of sports in your childhood and, and um, you growing up. And then um, we'll kind of work through the high school years. And you're a, a very young girl, so we don't have a whole lot post, post high school. But let's just kind of talk about the, the upbringing, the childhood. What, what was that like for you? Yeah, so I'm a Colorado native. Okay, and cool. And I grew up in Aurora, and I still live in Aurora. Uh-huh. And I have a very sweet upbringing mm. i'm an only child okay. and so i'm somewhat of a miracle child and they really were trying hard and it was almost like the last hope uh -huh. <laughs> and my mom like prayed for me and so in that sense they're super protective <laughs> Un understandable and yeah. it's beautiful i really appreciate that and it as much as sometimes it gets annoying, you know, be, like through the years of like being in high school, it would, <laughs> it would <laughs> conjure up me <laughs> wanting to sneak around and right, stuff, right, but right, we right. got through those years. I'm yeah. really happy that's over. Mm -hmm. Now we can be like really honest with one for another sure. and mm -hmm. they just want the best for me. They're the best support systems. They're such 
amazing humans. My mom and my dad are the hardest workers ever. Mm. And so I think that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree in that For sense. Sure. And yeah. I just got to watch what love looks like. They have been married for probably 22 years. Awesome. <laughs> and Beautiful. so that's really special to me. Mm -hmm. And I like to look up to them and at that, you know, and my mom has always liked to decorate our house and we celebrate holidays together. And so everything's very close and warm with my family. Mm -hmm. And that makes it really, my circumstances make it really easy for me to just dive in head first into what I'm doing because they just support me so much. And so when it was like college, they were all on board to help me, you know, uh, go to the college of my dreams. And we made that work. And like, I'm such a strong, pow like, will powered person. When I want something, I will make it happen. Mm -hmm. And until I realize I don't want it, and then it, it goes away. And like, yeah, it's yeah. so crazy how life works like that. And so <laughs> for me to have people that support me in the stages of life where I'm at and believe in my in my understanding of what's happening, you know, because if my parents didn't believe me in when I said I need to drop out of college mm -hmm. and they did, would look up down upon me because of that factor, then we wouldn't be it would we wouldn't blossom and we wouldn't be in the beautiful state of be, like place where we're at mm -hmm. together. But because they believe me and allow me to do what I need to do in this lifetime and experience it because they know they just know I'm an old soul. You yeah, can't. Yeah. <laughs> really put chains on me so i'm gonna do what i want to do and <laughs> they help me and it's, i love them yeah yeah so so um now you kind of mentioned uh kind of like sneaking around a little bit like in high school Be before we go there though you you also mentioned that you know your your mom was like praying praying for you and everything and um, so did you grow up in in like a specific uh kind of like religious setting or or not for the early part of my life, it was definitely we would go to church and we would go to Sunday school. So like Christianity, is that mm -hmm. kind of what you're Christianity, referring to? Christianity, yeah. yeah okay, my mom okay. is definitely a Christian woman mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. she likes that stuff. <laughs> and, <laughs> she likes that stuff. I love it. I love and it. I, and then I remember just, be, I think it hit at, at like being a teenager, we just... I don't think I, I think I opposed or just stopped, we just stopped going to church and mm. then stopped becoming a steeple point in my life. And then I found reggae music <laughs> <laughs> and Irie Vibrations and just the, that propelled me into the understanding of what it means to be in tune with your spirit right, and to find right. that place. And then for me, it, I didn't need church, I needed concerts mm. <laughs> and I needed live music and I needed that space to just frolic and be free and embrace my divinity because that's mm. where I would really, really feel it. And so it yeah, was yeah. so fascinating being a 13, 14 year old Haley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listening to this new music that just made me feel so alive. Mm. And then, and then, yep, that's how, that's what set it off. Okay. <laughs> so, so, um, you know, did like, Growing up in your earlier years, uh, going to you know church and, and being involved on mm -hmm. some level with Sunday school and Christianity, because I, you know, that's that's kind of like my my upbringing and stuff as well. Did did you know in in, the, in talking about God and things like that? Did you when you were younger? Did you did you think about that type of stuff much, or was it more of just kind of like a chore or something that you had to do and you kind of had to endure, so to speak? It wasn't a chore, okay. and I know while the passion lasted, I was into it, and we mm. would learn a lot, and I just know that there's like a spiritual connection, and however you feel it, that's what you have to follow, and so mm. my mom feels it through Christianity, and I love that, and I understand the interconnectedness, like there's like a spiritual, or I guess like a... a beautiful coincidence of like when she prayed for me to come to her like there's a whole backstory and it makes me believe in mother mary and the power mm. of all of that right and right 
So I get caught up. Religion isn't something I really focus on, yeah, but it's yeah. something important. And I'm glad that I had that upbringing For and that sure. structuring. Yeah. And then it led to, I went to a Christian school and then it led to another place called Quest Academy, <laughs> which was, a, it was called, uh, it was a place for gifted and talented minds. Yeah, yeah. And I went there from first to eighth grade. So it oh, was wow. much a, I, a segment of life all with the same people. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we all were, I guess, we weren't bad kids. We were really good kids. And yeah, we yeah. All, but And we were all focused on getting good grades and stuff. And then we all went to the same high school, a majority of us. Mm-hmm, so okay. that was like a... A whole part of my upbringing yeah. what what where did the kind of like you mentioned before kind of like in high school like kind of some sneaking around like what what was what was that all about was that just kind of you um stepping into kind of like learning about yourself and maybe wanting to hide some of that maybe from your parents because you thought maybe they were gonna you know not accept that what what, what was the sneaking around all about yeah i think it would be so that i wouldn't get in trouble so that i could continue to do what I wanted to do. Because <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you thought maybe your parents wouldn't because approve? It, well, <laughs> I remember a lot of it would have to do, so it starts in, I feel like 15, you're a freshman in high school, and that's where we I started like listening to reggae music and found out about marijuana. And <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> you know, like that part of your life. Yeah, and then yeah. I'm also just realizing that, I just feel like I was so far ahead. My mind when I was 15 years mm. old was like 22. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, like right now I feel like I could be 30 something. Right, right. And so at that time period, I could just see above it. And high school was so hard for me to get through because I could see above it. Like we're sh- sitting in a structured format that somebody in a hierarchy said this is how they're going to do it these little children and we're not going to specify about what these kids think is cool or you know what's going to help their brains absorb life and Mm. and how to be the most productive humans right because we don't all need to learn how to be accountants we all need to learn what fuels our soul like what do we want to do right. and let's do mm-hmm. that let's foster the creativeness let's foster the idea of manifestation through law of attraction by yeah, yeah. by being proactive if you are being you know like if you have intentions and you're acting upon it then chances are you're in that flow state and things are going to go according you know if you're practicing that time and time again so for me at an early age, I just felt like that should have, I, I just knew that it, I was going to get through high school mm-hmm. and it was just going to be this thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was a lot of, like, we the system would work like, yours, they call home and it's, your student has been late or absent for one class. So it's like, which one is it? <laughs> which one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was absent a lot. And then it got, it caught up to me. I think when I was like 17, I was truant. And it's funny when you're an honor roll student, you're passing your classes, but you're truant. Mm -hmm. And that's when it got then. So lots of shenanigans, shenanigans happened in high school. And it was so (laughs) much fun. Thank God all that happened because I needed that for my development as a human soul. I wasn't going to come to this earth this lifetime and not do the fun things that I needed to do Mm. during my adolescence because somebody else's sense of authority is going to take over you know so during that time period even though I was 16 and it's like scary to sneak around and stuff I'm just like you know what I'm connected to the higher sense of why I'm here on earth and I'm gonna do what I need to do right now (laughs) I love it Keep preaching, so girl. It's gonna be fun when you're my you're parents, speaking right to my soul. When my parents hear this. <laughs> hey, you know what though? It's 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 you though, right? Yeah, it's authentic. They know. It's real. Yeah. They probably know a little bit, right? <laughs> they know. <laughs> okay. It's caught it's caught up. They have they know who I am now. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's powerful and it's beautiful. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now <clears throat> So are you would you consider yourself like a a, a rebel on some level? I think that I am, yeah, maybe. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, because I I personally do. Like, yeah. Ever since I was a a very young boy, 
there's and I, I I mean I think like on some level because like I, I believe in the God of the Bible right and that was mm-hmm. a big part of my life and it's still um, you know a part of my life so I, I think on some level it's, it's God um, but ever since like I can remember being a, a young boy it's like there's something inside of me that I didn't put there my parents didn't put there but there's something inside of me Haley that's like I'm different mm-hmm. and like I've, I've I've experienced that throughout all of my life on, on all kinds of different levels. And it's like, the, the older I get, it's like the more there's this like, okay, I'm different. And, and the more like this rebelliousness just continues to kind of like um, be a powerful theme in my mm-hmm. life because it's like, I too see like kind of like the um, this, this hierarchy and just like, you know, People just kind of want other people to kind of, in a sense, like be their slaves and just kind of go through the motions. Don't ask questions. Don't, don't rock the boat, so to speak. Just, just do what we tell you and everything will be okay. And it's like, for me, I'm like, that's not the life that I'm trying to live. Like, hey, like, you know, go to college and then get this, get this, uh, get this job because then you're going to get your 401k. You're going to have, um, you know, insurance and this and that's like. I, I honestly don't care about all that because I know when my time's up on this earth, none of that's going with me. So kind of similar to yeah. you, it's like, hey, when you were, you know, a teenager in, in high school, I'm, I'm 32, so I'm a, I'm a grown man, but it's like, you know, it's like, hey, like, I, I'm going to live the life that, that I want to live. I, mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to create, you know, my, my life and, and, and chase after my passions. And it's just interesting because I fully accept and step into being a, a rebellious individual, mm-hmm. not to hurt anybody, yeah. not not to um, you know basically take my middle finger and, and say hey f you and f the world. It's not that at all, but it's just like not accepting the norm. Mm-hmm. So, do you do you kind of agree with all that, or do you yeah. feel like that's kind of you as well? I totally feel that sense of being as well because it's always just been within me. I've always it's been a a trademark of my being is compassion. Right. I'm like yeah. a compassionate person and it's mm-hmm. always been recognized. And so my intentions are always pure. Like I'm not here Absolutely. on this pl- planet to hurt people. Yes. I am here to fulfill myself as a, a being. And mm-hmm. that's always been something important to me. So as I carry it on through life, it's beautiful to exit those stages because maybe like my sense of authority and my... I guess it could be a abuse of of freedom because I went to college. That's a lot of unsupervision. Mm-hmm. Started a lot of bad habits. A lot of, like I w- w- just remember partying so often, and then that led to a really fun, like not eighteen, nineteen, twenty, like partying all the time. And so. I would do what I wanted and nothing was ever in the harm of anybody else, but maybe that's not the highest sense for myself. Mm. Maybe that's not what I'm supposed to be using my beautiful life energy for is Mm -hmm. to get the best hookups on like club, the club situation and the the bottles and the whatnots, you know, (laughs) and stuff that would like make me squeal and scream. Now I'm like, people are like, Hey, you want VIP bottle at the club? I'm like, Mm, I'm gonna have to pass like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm working right now or uh-huh. it's it's 9 30 on a Saturday night like I'm at my business grinding extra mm. for some reason and yeah, nope yeah. I do not want to party uh-huh. so now it's like my my sense of like I'm gonna do what I want to do when I want to it's about work now yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's about building my businesses and so having the freedom to do that is just amazing and I'm so happy to be in this stage of my life because it's the most, I feel like the most, the sweetest fruit right now. Mm. <laughs> That's good. So before we step into the current season you're in, let's, let's touch a little bit more on post high school. So you've, you've alluded to, you've mentioned college. You just talked about the partying a little bit, picking up some bad habits. So why don't you just break that down a little bit more for us if you don't mind, Haley? Yeah. So... I just remember the period when I was a senior in high school, it, you know, for seniors, it turns into a race to get into college right. and everything pretty much ceases to exist. And that's, I stopped doing sports cause I couldn't focus on it. I needed to focus on getting into college mm-hmm. and I wanted to go to DU. 
opposed to all the other colleges because I thought that if I wanted to be the best businesswoman I could possibly be, I needed to go to the best business school that there was in Colorado. Uh -huh. And so it was simple as that. With the power of the universe that I knew to be true at that, and I was discovering at that time right, and period of, of life, I was gonna put it to the test with getting into that school. Mm. And I did it. Right. <laughs> and I got a scholarship and it still didn't make DU cheap. So it mm. was expensive. Right, for sure. And then I got there and so, it, it was like when I was 17, I got involved in speech club and I got involved in business club. Right. And I was competing in the business plan competition. So from 17 years old, I was practicing the habits of, of starting your own business. Wow. And thank God for FBLA. That club is so good. Mm. And all the business clubs. I'm yeah, such a big yeah. advocate for business programs in high schools because that gave my life purpose. There was two years in high school where it was just blah, me, being a pothead, right. sneaking around, like not doing anything productive. But then the last two years turned into me honing in on being a young entrepreneur. And then I started my own jewelry company when I was a senior in high school. And that's what gave me leverage to get into such a prestigious school with such little money. And it was because I had a business. I started a business. I wanted to go to DU so that I could sp expand upon that and run my business. Mm -hmm. But then what did it do? <laughs> it loaded me up with a schedule of classes that, sure, I think that it could have been beneficial for me to learn all of those subjects. But when you're under the construct of someone else's time frame of how you should be learning, it's so difficult, mm. especially when you're in a place that it's vigorous. It's a vigorous system and right. under 10 week uh, like quarters so right, every right. week you're learning like stacks of information and for me it would be like week one info by week three I would have been like solid we're good we are mastered let's mm -hmm. move on right but for that for me it would lead to a lot of like hey man do you have the answer for number three or also did you get page five I, you know like yeah, I need help yeah. you know I would need so much help and I feel like i a lot of people, you know, it was a lot of cheating. Like that's For not sure. your mind working and learning. That is you desperately trying to save your grade so that you're not wasting mm. thousands of dollars on failing the class. Right, right. And it was so hard. I did a year there and like, bless, bless it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you survived, right? <laughs> but it was a lot of money and I failed the class and what it did teach me was that, okay, it was not connected to the material, could not learn at that speed, so that's a failure altogether. Not, not succeeding at school. But there's this whole new party scene that just opened up, and I'm a fresh, like, 18-year-old woman. <laughs> 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 and my parents do not see when I leave or come home. Right. So I was free to do whatever, whenever, and really in a sense, like in a sense that's not good for myself. If for I had sure. been at home, and that's why I had to go back home after I was failing too many classes. And then while at home, I realized that, okay, why was I even there? I was there because I wanted to get better at running at the time the business was Bella Luna Treasures. I wanted to run my jewelry business and be the best boss lady and, and make money that way. And, yeah. you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to take all these classes and, and learn. But then I realized, like, that's not the, the sense. So I convinced my parents to let me, I was like, let me drop out for six months and then let's see what happens in that time period. And if I can advance myself in my business, then maybe that will prove to you that I really don't need school and I need to follow my business because sure. it was just a thing. I also at the time was working with two people who were trying to build a business and I was in school. <clears throat> so it's like my mind was halfway there and for it to work, I needed to be all the way there. Yeah. So that was like the construct of why I dropped out of college. Mm. And then six months after dropping out, it led to a vortex of things I would have never, ever, ever anticipated. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I don't have a jewelry company that is like my whole world, but I am a lady that makes jewelry and I sell it inside of my shop. Yeah. And I own a shop with two other people. We own a studio, we own a CBD brand, <laughs> we own two CBD brands. Yeah. And so it's this crazy evolution that struck like 
November 2017. That's when I met Todd and I showed up to an event as a model and it was for a fashion show and I at the time yeah I was just a college I think I don't even know if I had dropped out at the time I was just a young college little lady and <laughs> had a jewelry company <laughs> my jewelry was going to be fashioned in the in the or featured in the fashion show awesome so it was a big come up for me at the time and then I got to model in the show and then that struck the relationship I had with Todd because I knew I wanted to be a part of like the business movement he was creating. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's just something about him where I could feel it. I was like, that dude's, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna listen to that dude. And then slowly within six months, I would say I was all on board with just being involved in his businesses, right. which was at the time it was, we were the Colorado 420 girls and we were doing <laughs> brand promotion and fashion shows for other brands in Denver. And then we realized well, first off, there was a trademark issue out there, so then we were like, oh, we have to change our name. And we were like, that's a good thing, because right. do we want to be the 420 girls forever? Right, right, yeah. <laughs> and the, the concept of Vibe Mafia was something that like I conjured up a couple of years prior, so we were like, Vibe Mafia, and then we just came up with good, the Good Vibe Mafia. That's right, right, yeah. a very good term to describe what we all are together, because we're all people who have similar mindsets such as mine. And if you were to speak to my team members and interview them, I'm sure they would say a lot of things that sound similar. We would have some similar mindsets. So it's really amazing. And, but it, it's crazy to see an evolution happen. Like I believe Todd, when he was talking about what he was talking about two years ago. Yeah. And since then we've seen people flow in and flow out, but the people that have flowed in and stayed, they, w there's a, the, it's me and Gabby. <laughs> right, right, And yeah. now we're watching the, the, I don't know, it's like a the wave, the after effect, it ripples out mm -hmm. and then you just watch it happen and you for do it sure. again and so, so here we are now. Go, for <laughs> sure, we, we, we are here right now and it's, 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 uh, it's powerful and it's beautiful. What, what's something, before we uh, kind of expound more on uh, the Good Vibe Mafia and everything that you've currently got going on, <clears throat> what's been something, Haley, for you personally that you've uh, struggled with and you've really had to overcome or break through, let's say, in the last uh, two to three years? Hmm. I think that it wasn't like an intentional breakthrough, but I think that I just rewired my hardware and like my right. whole mindset where life now just revolves i think it's just growing up okay. honestly yeah, yeah like i can't think of anything that has really set me back that i've had to overcome like obviously everybody has small things like mm -hmm. for me it's like muscular things like mm -hmm. i have really tight muscles and so to be flexible i have to really really focus on it it's not right. easy to like make uh strides like it takes like day-to-day -day consistency of stretching like I'm trying to, I've been trying to get the splits forever yeah, so you know it's yeah. like those things where if you don't do it every day I'll be, I can see the setback it brings mm. and so it's just good to take note of those feelings when it's happening because then you, it helps you put that forth in other areas of your life where like repetition is key right right and whether it's stretching or you know focusing on eating healthy that's mm -hmm. something for me I'm a complete sweet tooth and I could yeah. eat nothing but cookies and candy and chips and tastes so good doesn't like it like <laughs> all the things that are so bad for me I could eat it all day long but it's also coming to fact of like what's good for me and should I eat like I'm a nine-year-old or should I eat like a an adult that needs vitamins and nutrients oh, and that's great. so just yeah. being real with myself because I can be super not real and eat all those like junky snacks and then be like, oh, I'm gonna go to sleep tonight feeling good about, you know, about the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I can like make some effort to put a smoothie in myself too. Cause I, it's all about the balance. Like I can't not, not eat sugar. It's right, just a yeah. thing. I'm like, I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I can eat smoothies and, you know, take vitamins and stuff that are yeah, good for, for me. Sure. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, where did, where did this, um, I'm, I'm pretty, interested in and fascinated by you know you kind of like 
at such a young age grasping like your um, interest in in business so like you, you kind of join these clubs and things you said I, I I believe like around your junior year in high school and uh, but so so what what does business do for you like how did you kind of get attracted to these clubs in high school how did you like, really fall in love with business and then you know on a, on a, a greater level entrepreneurship like what what, do, what does business do, do for you what is what does entrepreneurship mm -hmm. do uh, for you and, and and what does it do like kind of like in, in inside of you yeah that's a great question and it reminds me because so for me when I was in high school, the first two years, it was a time to explore. So right. I was finding like the people who I resonated with. And I found out that a lot of the people I grew up with, like seeing every day the people who I considered best friends and stuff in middle school or in elementary school, they were no longer applying to yeah, my, yeah. myself in that time period. And so it was, it was self-transformation. I was a loner for a second there and I couldn't find people I resonated with. And I remember seeking a, and I would hang out with the kids that like smoked cigarettes and hung out on the hill and were real bad kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then I realized like, that's not who I really am. And so it was just a lot of confusion. And I tried to join some clubs and realized like, eh, these people, not my tribe you know, or right, like not my sure. collection of people. Mm -hmm can't jive with them you know I don't they don't like me I don't like them yeah, yeah. <laughs> even though we're not saying it it's right. what's real oh yeah and then so the that led me to exploring and then people would talk about the business clubs and I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna try that and I chose FBLA and I there's FBLA or DECA and I just felt like there was like the in in the classrooms it was like one was the door on the right and one was the door on the left <laughs> and i was like the one on the left looks like heaven <laughs> i'm gonna go there yeah yeah and it was such a good choice and the teacher was so amazing and the program was just really good it opened the door up to so many because there's like the business plan competition but there's also over 130 competitions that you can wow. pick from like parliamentary procedure and Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. There's yeah, lots of stuff. Yeah, sure. Beyond my competition, I didn't really pay attention much. But what it taught me and my business partner in the club, Melissa, um, which we still work together in this business today, like wow. through the time shifted, like now we're also working together. <laughs> and we learned how to, at, and she was a creative. We were both like creative fashionistas. And so okay. she had a clothing company. She would sew clothing in high school, which was dope. Wow, yeah, that's cool. And I liked her because of that. And I bought some things from her in the past. And we joined the club late. And we were like, let's be business partners. <laughs> <laughs> and it made sense. And for us, well, for me, it gave me a new community. And mm. it was people that weren't judgmental in yeah. any sensation. It was just such a beautiful plane to exist on and, mm -hmm. and grow with. And so that's what it did for me. And that's what some clubs do for everybody. That's mm -hmm. why it's important to find your club, like to right. dabble around. It's important for there to be clubs in high school. It's important for kids to know that they can be creative and, for sure. and think of a club to bring to the world. But it was because of that club that I realized what life is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> life is not high school right. and whatever, construct that some adults created for the kids in high school like that's a hard subject to touch upon but it's definitely not the system for everybody and that's where when you're talking about the rebel like being a rebel <clears throat> i've always felt comfortable with that term and not in a bad way like yeah. you know it's good to be a rebel Absolutely. and i when i grew up i would listen to this lady named pink yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, she's, she's got some good stuff. Yeah, she was the lady. Like, I looked up to her growing up. Yeah, yeah. And this one song says, like, I don't play your rules, I make my own. And that statement <laughs> hit me as, like, an eight-year-old girl. So, mm. you know, and it carried on. And it, it made me not in the best ways all the time, but I always had that feeling inside of, like, I don't play your rules, I make my own. <laughs> 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 and so you either... <laughs> You're, or I either like your game and I'm playing your rules, right, or if right. I don't like it, I'm not playing your game. I'm yeah, playing yeah. mine. It's good. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I've carried that, so that's given me given me such a, I guess it's my fiery, like, confident, 
sassy lady in me is of just the like that's my rebel that's my yeah. person of like yeah. i can i can do i can stand tall and do it because i know what i'm doing is right when you mm. come from a place of just knowing that your cause on earth is of a good one uh -huh. then it just puts you on a different tier i think you're like participating in a different frequency of life <laughs> yeah cool good deal so kind of like what i'm hearing is that you know business and more specifically uh, being an entrepreneur allows you to fully be yourself and express yourself in the way that you want to in order to positively impact the world is that fair to say yeah definitely okay and cool. it's like what showed me because i paired opening my vision to business it gave me a real understanding like life is a lot about commerce and business and entrepreneurs and there's a there's a division you either like become an entrepreneur and do it that way which is the scary road not traveled right. or you do it a different way which is like could be the sunshiny pathway to joy you never know or you could go that way and then you know stumble off in one pathway and then find like land that you can build an empire and an For oasis sure. on you, yeah, you know yeah. and do it yourself that way so there's lots of ways to look at life and that's why it's just so important to put yourself out there and be confident in what feels good to you if it feels good follow it because mm. that's what building your life is if it's not feeling good to you then maybe you need to be real with yourself because it either doesn't feel good because others are putting a construct and like a box around you yeah or you are putting a box around you or something else right but right we all have to i think that the purpose of life is to get in tune with ourselves to a, such an extent that we can begin to transform the communities mm -hmm. around us <laughs> yeah i like that and then yeah cool <laughs> all right so let's let's talk about uh more in depth good vibe mafia let's talk about um, you know the CBD and everything that kind of encompasses what you've got going on what your team's got going on just break all that down for us yeah I think I'll just break it down from so it started we were a group of models photographers doing fashion shows for other mm -hmm. brands and then we changed into the good vibe mafia and then shortly after that Todd had the opportunity to start manufacturing CBD products mm -hmm. and we realized that it was such an exploding market and for sure. he's been in business for so long like his whole life and he's also been in the fitness industry selling mm -hmm. fitness equipment for 25 years and so he's very familiar with that world and he was just like this is we need to jump like we need to make a move with this like yeah. this is what I'm doing I'm making a move with this and the group of people that we had on board with us you know we we came together for a set of reasons the reasons either remained aligned or like they didn't at that point in time because it was like we're now a group of fashion models but there's CBD involved so for the longest it allowed us to use that as a marketing tool like models we would all the photo shoots that were first uh, d done for our company it was just like a good that was how it worked out good until th at that time it either made sense for it to work as a modeling agency with all those models or something else yeah and yeah because the money like there's not enough money to pay everybody to, for the photo shoot for sure we're just like a weird little group of people with a CBD company now like now we don't have money to pay for nothing <laughs> and right, we didn't have right. money to pay for nothing anyways we're yeah, just like a yeah. startup a fun idea and so for a lot of people the fun idea wasn't worth it like you can't if it doesn't involve the payout like I'm gone so right, right. cut psh, half the <laughs> people removed then yeah. it's like new people then you find new people in the community because you're building an identity when you're building a startup it's all this process of just like okay this is what we are and this is what we're building now and then you build more and then you're like oh look at what we've become mm -hmm. this is what we're building now this is what we are yeah yeah <laughs> and so that process happens and team comes and team goes and it's really fun because I've been there since the beginning and so for me I've always just jived with like Todd's vision and I just know knew for me I'm just a college dropout I am here to learn mm -hmm. I am not here to judge right i'm broke anyways i would have been broke in college yeah i'm broke you know like i'm gonna be broke with you guys while you build this because i felt it i was like this 
this could be something good. Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> and so, I, let's let's see. The CBD company started in April 2018. Okay. And then by September, we opened the retail space. Awesome. Because the brand had grown to a point where it was like, we need a place to sell this stuff out of. And then the, the our group of people, we were growing to the point where it was like, we need a place to work out of all together. So that started up, and then the, the shop, when we first opened, September 2018, <laughs> mm -hmm. that was just a, such a funny time period because it made no sense. Like, CBD takes up one portion, and we had a whole entire storefront to fill, so <laughs> at the time period, we had fitness equipment in our shop because it made sense. Like, a guy Todd worked with, they, re they worked out a deal where it was like, put the fitness equipment in the window, and it gave us some leverage at the beginning yeah, to start. Um, and then some Grassroots California clothing and then Synergy Organic Clothing is another brand. And we just had, so basically like a few racks of very barren, yeah, <laughs> barren yeah. racks and people would come in and be like, and we had these chairs in the shop. It was kind of like this living room setup uh -huh. in the middle of the shop. Okay. So people would come in and be like, this a house and we're like <laughs> no and they're like cbd and we're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> there you go. come here and then so that carried on for a year just slowly building like that would so i guess that would carry us to september of this year yeah yeah and september of this year we got our shop way more built out like more clothing so less barren maybe got the fitness equipment out like mm -hmm making sense it's all you know and it's all this beautiful come up because we are building from the dirt and for me i'm a thrifter i am a thrift savvy mama and i love <laughs> <laughs> to hit the arc and the goodwill and yeah. i can find like i found this i found these i found this i found this like my whole outfit is from the thrift store but it's like the finest goods yeah and it's so good. i like I've, it furnished this basically this whole studio back there the whole store all the props and the knickknacks and things that help the store be a store it's uh -huh. all come from the thrift shop so we just make the most with what we have because it's like poverty we're like working with it's like here's a hundred dollars to furnish the studio right, right. <laughs> or you know it's like but it comes it comes in waves because then you get another hundred you get yeah, another hundred to spend on like making things beautiful and so here we are in December, like closing out 2019, and we've been in business for, well, I guess the retail establishments have been in business for a year and three months ish. Yeah, yeah. And we have an amazing team put together. We have a staff finally, like me, Todd, and Gabby are the owners, and then we have. Um, a regular named Katie who mm -hmm. works with us and she does graphics and she's such a gem and that's uh -huh. where it's so beautiful that we're just building and we're like us three business owners it does like we've dedicated everything all the weight will fall on us we've dedicated our lives to this completely and for me and Gabby we're such young individuals but this is like if we were in college, we would be seniors right now, finishing out our senior year of yeah, college. Right, so right. we're not losing anything. Absolutely not. And what we're gaining is so much. We're gaining equity in a business mm. that's like on the come up. Yeah. And our business has tentacles. We started as a place that, or started with the creative aspect. Good Vibe Mafia is still a group of models and photographers that create content for brands. Yeah. We can create all the content for our brand. And then we hope to create beautiful content for other people's brands as well. Um, we are a group of people that started a CBD company, Good Vibe CBD, mm -hmm. and we're available in, I feel like, 10 states in the nation awesome. now, and yeah. we're working on covering all 50. For sure. <laughs> and then we just struck up our the biggest deal yet in Ohio with Kenneth's Hair and or Hair Day Spa. Mm -hmm. um, or hair salon and day spa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that deal, we created another line called Shocker Skin, which mm. is like our evening gown CBD company because it's high-end products that are um, in really pretty bottles, really great packaging, and different scents. Like 
Uh, there's a sweet rose one and a vanilla coconut body bar, and mm. those are just so, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we also opened up the studio space, which was such a ironic coincidence of the universe because Gabby, who is one of the owners at the shop, um, she is also a yoga instructor, mm. and we would teach yoga classes out of our store space. At the time, the shop was pretty barren, so moving things around was easy for class. Yeah, yeah. And then, but it was becoming pre like pretty, you could tell it wasn't going to be easy to do that forever. For sure. And then this was a spin bike studio, but okay. the lady needed to move out and the landlord was like, hey guys, do you want to take on the yoga studio? I know you guys do yoga. We were like, oh, what? Perfect, yeah, perfect. <laughs> you know, it was such a huge commitment, but we, it was like, how could we not? Yeah. Because if this place, if we didn't jump on it and say, okay, we'll do it then it would have gotten sold and who knows what it would have become right and we yeah, would have had yeah. to walk past this space every day and be like <laughs> right like right, that should have yeah. been our yoga studio so we're balls deep in it like it's not easy running two businesses especially one already had a hefty rent this one's got a heftier rent oh i bet and then yeah. one's got to pay for the other till it makes until the other bailed itself out so For it's sure. like we have more weight on ourselves ever than ever but we have more ammunition on mm. our belt than ever <laughs> there you go so we, we're in battle <laughs> you, you are now i i want to i want to ask you Haley, because you meant you had mentioned um todd's vision what what is what is so you know uh the the three of you guys that are that are owners what what is your overall vision for Good Vibe Mafia and everything that kind of falls in, in into that um, category. Yeah, I envision that. So for the studio space, we're building a really amazing community here because it brings a place like this space can hold dance events, it can hold ceremonies, it can hold massage workshops, it can hold like concerts. Yeah, yeah. And so there's so much that can happen in this space itself, and that's what we we're trying to bring alive when we were in our store space, like bringing it alive through the store space. But then we outgrew that, moved all the like creative stuff into the studio. So that's like the hub for the creative side because we can turn this into a photo studio. It's mm. the filming place. Like that's why we're in here right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this is like, this is one ship. <laughs> and we would hope that within the next year, like this place is getting... 15 people in every single class and there's classes multiple times a day mm -hmm. hopefully if you know we move to that point and every single day throughout the week there's classes right right and so that's gvm studios and then with mm, good vibe mafia the shop we're just looking to make more connections with brands we align with right now we have lots of local artists and jewelry and then we have clothing and it's just a slow progression building out because it takes money to buy wholesale and so what we try to do is is barter with people in a friendly sensation uh -huh. of like hey we do photos and we also do videos we sell cbd so there's so many routes like we could trade photos we could trade cbd inventory for clothing inventories mm -hmm. and so many ways we can mm. work with people so it opens up the network of like business opportunities huge so good vibe mafia the shop is like the hub to help the commerce and and help other people find a home for their art and for their mm. clothing so they can have a chance as an entrepreneur and it's like the place for entrepreneurs to f like bump fists together yeah, and like it. work together it. and then it ho is the house of our CBD <laughs> right right so we have our good vibe CBD brand and um well, first off, I would say with the shop, I, I think that our vision in the upcoming years is to maybe open one in the mountains cool. and get another like clothing brand going on up there mm -hmm. and just like expanding that exactly what we're doing here in Denver, but in different locations. Love it. And then we want to do that in in other states as well. Nationwide, we'll yeah. Yeah, we'll probably, I don't know if, na like, but in the big hubs, like, mm. I like Chicago, Miami, New York. Um, Ohio we got to get some branches spread out and then it's just gonna be the good like once we get our stakes then as owners we're gonna be able like we're gonna continue to rise because it's like right now what I would hope is that 
we're inspiring our team members to gain leadership in our company. We're opening the door for them to have more responsibilities. Like as we rise, we're able to compensate more and stuff. And it's just this right like thing as like an as the owners, we're just looking at how to make it all happen for everybody. Like we want for everyone sure. involved to be rising with a, like mm -hmm. rising up. And so it's gonna be so cool when I think that like the establishments can run themselves and then we're no longer needed to be in the shop every single day, then we'll be able to like go across to the states <laughs> and make sure all parts of the operation are working in unison yeah, with one another. Yeah. But that's all like fantasy and you know in my head right now. Right. What's real right now is that we've got this the storefront here in Denver and we sell the CBD out of there. We you know we've been watching more people come in every single week month to month and so it's a progressive like rise and we're able to meet new people and sell more cbd and it's For just sure. a beautiful product i never knew about it until i got and still involved in this company yeah. but i'm so passionate about it mm -hmm. now and so 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 talk talk to uh the listeners share with the listeners haley just specific let's let's just stay on the topic of cbd like like first of all kind of like what is cbd and and it's this has been brought up several times on my podcast but uh, people that are listening to this specific episode maybe haven't caught those previous episodes so what is cbd and and for me personally i've only heard positive things about it so what what are some of the positive things about cbd um and and how can people use it in their day-to-day -day lives yeah so to just start like to break it down and make it all make sense cbd comes from the hemp buds okay and so you have this beautiful plant and it's the hemp plant and it has leaves that look a lot like marijuana leaves but it's they're two different species yeah. of plant and the buds that come from the hemp plant is what gets harvested for the creation of cbd so they'll mm -hmm. take those buds and it goes through an extraction process and through that um, process it'll the first step is it creates full spectrum CBD or a CBD distillate and it's a golden liquid oil and that's what we use in a majority of our products is full spectrum CBD because in that state of extraction there is still a wide array of cannabinoids that come from the hemp plant mm -hmm. or from the hemp buds and the cannabinoids like that's the medicinal um, portion like that's what is healing for your body right and the hemp buds that there's over 136 cannabinoids that are present in the hemp bud and mm. so when you make a full spectrum oil all those cannabinoids are still present and so it's really great for your body mm -hmm. and then when you take it a step further and you take that liquid oil and extract it further that becomes CBD isolate okay and at that point in that state it's like a it's a crystallized form and it becomes a powder that you can reintroduce into your hemp seed oil or into whatever for gummies and stuff yeah, yeah. Like isolate so okay and that's just because it you're not going to get any flavor of the plant um or anything like that it's very refined and no thc nothing right right in the full spectrum cbd what the legal limit of thc is is 0 0.03 and okay. people who are properly doing it we have test uh, reports that will show the cannabinoids like what cannabinoids are present and the percentages of it and so we're able to see what our uh, tinctures and body bars test at and mm -hmm. make sure like that it's a good batch right no like not high levels of thc but it's good when we're our full spectrum batches are coming showing like traces of cbn and cbg and all these other cannabinoids because uh -huh. that means it's really pure mm. and we'll compare it to other people's test results of their full spectrum products and it will you know their products aren't showing the cbn and the cbg and stuff like that it's in if it it's showing up at zero percent or in where ours would come up as like 0 0.01 something or 0 0.02 something so it's like in such small um, amounts but when for example the cbn molecule if you took a dropper full of that it would make you sleep for like two weeks or like a week or something it's like a powerful substance yeah. so you only 
need it in trace amounts where it's mm. like getting a trace amount of CBN and CBG in your full spectrum tincture is going to help heal your body. If you're taking it for sleep, it's going to help you sleep better. If you're taking it to, for anxiety relief, it's going to help you, you know, relax easier and quicker and more effectively. Um, but it's also just a preference because then you don't, some people don't want any other cannabinoids besides CBD and they could take an isolate product. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, how how do you personally? Um, I know you kind of mentioned CBD as a part of your um, personal routine in the morning. How how do you uh, partake in CBD? How do you ingest it? How do you use it day to day for for yourself personally? Yeah. So for me, I use it every single day in the morning with the lotions and okay. the body bars. Mm -hmm. And so all of our topical products, I pretty much create a routine of using that and it helps take care of like sore muscles or tight mm -hmm. aches and pains that are happening in my neck throughout the day <clears throat> so it just makes it life way easier during the day by incorporating it in the morning and then I'm always so wound at night like my brain is still wanting to answer emails or edit pictures and stuff like that so I'll take full spectrum tincture in the uh -huh. evening and then that just helps me in my natural sleep rhythm like feel tired you know because it's like at, at 1 30 a.m i'm should be tired after a full day but then for some reason it's like i'm fully awake and want to just keep living my yeah, life right yeah. now and my body needs something to help it remember that it's t that it, you know i need to go to sleep for sure yeah so it's for sure a switch that helps and so Every person's different, like that's why I use it. Um, but it helps if it, a person need, has anxiety, it can help them as well. Like the mm. tincture helps me with sleep and I don't take it for anxiety because I don't get really anxiety like that to be like, yeah, I need to take yeah. tincture for this. If I am in an anxious situation, I will though, like flying or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just really cool to be able to help. We're kind of like, we're pinpointers because we're able to ask people what are you struggling with or what, you know, are you struggling with sleeping? Are you having intestinal issues? Is your stomach hurt a lot? Or are you, you know, like, do you need help driving, like feeling calm when you're driving your car? Mm -hmm. So we're able to help people talk about what they're, what they're experiencing. And then we can find a product and a strength that helps them the most because that's mm -hmm. the other thing too and we're super transparent and we just want to express to people that to make sure that you're getting the right dosage and the right milligrams and making sure that the company at least is you know being legit about that stuff because some people will put like 1500 on their label but it'll be like a 750 milligram of product course, yeah and there's all kinds of misleading yep. thingies that happen out there where we catch it and we'll be like oh my god look at those people yeah, like yeah. they're screwing with people's psychology mm -hmm, <laughs> for sure for sure just looking at tricks and stuff yeah, the world's yeah. tricky people well <laughs> you, it's, it's just like you know for those of us that are heavily you know involved in in the fitness um world you know you look at like the whey protein and you know different different the whole supplement um industry is 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 wacky it's 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 come a long way like for me when i was growing up like you know i'd go to bodybuilding.com and get like this huge you know like you know uh gallon jug of whey protein and only god knows what was in that stuff you know what i mean and and, and again it's the third party testing and um, uh, uh, illegal substance testing. It's, it's come a long way, especially I'd say probably in the last five years, but still overall, uh, I always say that the supplement industry is the wild, wild west. And, you know, it's really important to have that third party testing to really look at certain, certain things um, when it comes to supplements to make sure it is, it is pure and it is, you know, the best version of, of itself that you can be spending your, your money on. Cause a lot of people, you know, they're going to cut those corners so that they can, they can make more money. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I really appreciate that you guys are taking those steps to, to, to make the highest quality product. So we're, 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 we've gone for an hour and 18 minutes. So we're going to start moving towards the, the finish line. Um, there are a few things I, I do want to touch on a little bit. Um, I, I, this is, this is on your Instagram and I, I want to ask you about this in your, in your bio. It says space kitty from Venus. 
So, <laughs> so um, break that down for us, please. What, 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 is, what is all of that about? <laughs> so I'm just a cosmically inclined person, so I really feel like I'm from outer space. Okay. I connect with the stars, and I'm really trying to learn about our positioning in outer space and understand about astrology more. Mm -hmm. But I just know that my specific chart and my specific stars, um, I have a very intense relationship with Venus, mm -hmm. the planet. Okay. Okay. And I'm ruled by Venus and <laughs> Venus is all about love and yeah, relationships. Yeah. And so that's like a very big part of like who I am at my core mm. and I'm also a kitty cat at my core. <laughs> I was going to ask you are, you, are you a, are you a cat? Yes. <laughs> you're, you're, if you you're didn't know, you can ha just Haley the cat Envision from me as the nicest, softest kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> cat woman. I, I like that though. Cat woman. She was pretty, pretty intense. She's badass. Huh? You don't yeah. want to mess with her. You yeah. still leave you this. <laughs> that so that that's you, huh? You got Messed this. Up. You're very sweet and kind and soft, but you don't yeah. wanna, you don't want to mess I, with Haley. All I want in life is <laughs> snuggles and warmth and soft, cuddly things. But if you mess with me, I will stick my claw out. <laughs> and <laughs> I love it. Man. You don't want me to scratch you. It's good. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the, one of the best lines ever on the podcast. You don't want me to scratch you. That's good, girl. That's good. And so, yeah, space kitty cool, from cool. Venus. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> one other thing that um, you had posted recently on your Instagram, on your main feed, and this is just a little snippet of it, but I want you to just uh, kind of share um, from your heart what, what, what this means. But you, you said, we bloom, we wither. We bloom, we wither. Ebbs and flows are the natural progression which keep us blooming. What, what, what does that uh, mean? What, what's that all about? Yeah, it's just a beautiful statement of life, first of all, mm -hmm. to remind us that in the life of a rose, that is what happens, is that mm. we bloom and blossom, and then our petals fall off, and then mm. we bloom and bo blossom again. And so in those time periods when our petals are falling off, it's okay to feel that because that's mm. natural and we're supposed to be in that state of being when it's happening, if you're truly in tune. And yeah. so just during that time period, I really just needed to say that because it was what I was feeling. I was feeling my petals falling off and it was like, you know, like you're, for me, I was going through a breakup in that very, very moment. Like I think it just happened. And so I needed to express the emotion of like feeling your petals falling off. It's like losing a sense of identity almost and you have to like pick your well it's not even because you can't pick yourself up up your petals are right. like falling off you have to wait to rebloom yeah and yeah. during that process it's the ebb and flow it's the ocean it's like it's the rhythm and the cadence of life and if you just flow with it it'll pass and so in that time period it was like it was heart-wrenching pain and just hurt because I am a lover. I'm ruled by Venus. I'm a space kitty from mm -hmm. Venus. Of <laughs> and yeah. so when my heart feels pain, it's deep and corruptive and beautiful at the same time because it's a whole contrast. I don't feel that side of myself mm. so often. And so it's not highlighted. When I get to feel that side, when I get to feel my deep, dark self of just like the sadness that can crush me, it feels really bad. It feels like, it feels like, dying you know it yeah, feels hard yeah. it makes me empathize and feel compassion for all people that spend more time on the spectrum of emotions in that place because it is not easy it makes you question a lot because you're just like feeling so much you feel it you're like fucked up by your feelings yeah yeah so in that time period i was like fucked up by my feelings and i wanted to place it into a beautiful perspective and I did so for myself yeah. and hope, in hopes that it would resonate. And that's really cool that it did. Uh-huh. For, for sure. What, what's, the, um, what's the most attractive trait for you personally in another human being? Hmm. It's all just about the, the love language. <laughs> I don't know. Just okay. like connecting in that space of like – what feels best for each other's hearts because it's hard to know like what is 
I don't know. I just know that there's something, if you touch my heart, then that's what is real for me and like what I'm looking for. Yeah, but I guess yeah. just like someone who is seeking the highest good for themselves mm. and the world around them. Yeah. And you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay. Before I ask you <clears throat> the last question to, to wrap up our conversation, is there a, a message? Is there something that's in your heart or in your soul that you just want to put out into the world that you just kind of want to speak um, something maybe outside of what we've already talked about um, during our conversation? So what, what would you like to kind of leave the listeners with? Um, what, what's really just kind of like um, that, that heart song that you want to put out there, Haley? I want to tell everybody to not feel ashamed of acting out of this song that's coming from your heart because sometimes you can't control that song that's coming from your heart. It speaks a certain way and says a certain thing and you want to follow it and dance to it in your own rhythm and you should be free to. We should all be free to express ourselves and if the people around us can't jive with the rhythm we're on, then they either need to get over it or someone needs to get over it, you know? You know, like we need to take action and be accountable for our lives because we have one, it's our life. Not we, Nobody else's opinions can determine the way you're feeling in the moment because we're here now. Mm. Me, 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 I. It's all, you know, like that's important. Don't feel ashamed to care about yourself. Like give yourself the most love the most love because even no matter how much you love other people if you give yourself the most love first then you can love everyone around you so well that mm. it feels like the, you're loving them first too but you have to if we don't put ourselves first then we'll forget <laughs> mm. so take care of yourselves everybody and follow your dreams because that p passion of taking care of yourself will uh, will lead to alignment and when you're aligned with the reality around you, you're going to stumble into coincidences. You're going to mm. stumble into events, circumstances, people that will shift your, your pathway. It'll make sense or it won't make sense. You have to follow the feelings. And when you follow the feeling right, you'll go to the right place mm. Powerful. <laughs> until you learn, you know, it's yeah. all, yeah. A, it's just an experiment life is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the last question that I have for you, Haley, what sets your soul on fire? Hmm. Just being Haley. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> Just it's being <laughs> Haley. The 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 uh the space kitty from Venus. Yeah. Right? Just simply waking up and being me yeah. is what sets set it sets it on myself set, on fire. Sets your soul on fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's good though. Yeah. Because a lot of people, a lot of people are ashamed of who they are. Right. A lot of people hold a lot of uh, shame. They have a. They, they hold a, a lot of um, pain and hurt and hatred and negativity inside. And and a, lo a lot of people, you know, the life that they're living, it's it's not the life that they want to live. And their soul isn't set on fire by by their life. You know what I mean? It kind of yeah. that ties right back into what you kind of shared there. That kind of that final message to the listeners is like. You got to love yourself first. You got to take care of yourself first. You've got to be, you know, excited about your life so then you can show up in life, you know, mm -hmm. the best, most powerful version of yourself and give yourself to other people, love other people, serve other people, help other people. Right. So uh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. And, and that's, that's awesome that, you know, what sets your soul on fire is, is you because like, that's where it all starts. Just exactly what you said. It starts with us. So then we can go out into the world and, and positively impact it. So yeah. it's good. It's very good. Okay. So if um, somebody has resonated with uh, your story, with um, just what you've put out into the world today, if somebody wants to find out more about uh, the, the Good Vibe Mafia and the CBD and um, the creativity, everything that you guys have got, got going on, where can, first of all, people find out more about you, Haley, and then find out more about the businesses that, that you're a part of. Yeah, so personally, I'm on Instagram the most, and my I made my username so long ago, but it's just stuck, and it's at H-V-I-L-X-Y, which is like a fun way of 
crafting Haley, like making the V is like a upside down A without the a line through the middle and the X is an E. And for some reason, my maybe 13, 14 year old mind was like, yup, that is, that's what I'm going to call myself that's <laughs> on Instagram. And uh-huh. it's stuck and people I will actually, cause it kind of reads like Hivlexi or something. So people will be like, Hivlexi. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I can't change it. <laughs> I am this. <laughs> it's definitely a, a unique Instagram handle. I'm like, I don't even know what the, these letters are or what right, this, like, how I'm supposed to say it. But hey, it's Haley. It's, it's supposed good. to look like something, though. You know, it, it it's doesn't cool. even matter. Because then you, yeah, you come it's to my you. profile and sunshine is expressed. So yep, I saw that. Then, good vibe mafia is just at good vibe mafia um, on Instagram, at Facebook. It's good vibes mafia because of stupid reasons <laughs> somebody already took the other one and then good vibes cbd on insta and facebook Perfect. at shocker skin on instagram if you want to see what's up with our new skincare mm. fancy cbd line and yeah cool and then where is the physical location that we're at today doing this podcast so people in the Denver area can stop by and, and yes. chat chat with you chat with your crew and and buy some uh, some of the goods in, in the in the store yes so today we're in the lovely GVM studios which is our event space we can hold dance classes yoga classes um, pretty much anything your mind can create within the capacity of the space we can do in this space in here <laughs> so GVM Studios is at 4970 East Colfax, and then our shop is just on the other side of the bar, to a door down, and that is 4956, and that is where we sell all the clothing, all the CBD, where you can find me day to day, most days. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right, so uh, Haley, I just want to thank you very much for the opportunity to connect today. Thank you for the opportunity to podcast. I thank you and appreciate um, just your authenticity and your willingness to, to share your story. Uh, so, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. You're, you're very welcome. So listeners, I just want to again thank you for tuning in to the 127 Fit podcast. Your listening ears um, are always greatly appreciated. If you would like to find out more about the guests or myself personally, uh, you can find out more about the guests. You can find out more about myself personally on Instagram, that Instagram handle is at 127fit. Facebook is at Quentin Vars. LinkedIn is also Quentin Vars. If you guys would do me a huge favor <clears throat> and please leave a five star rating and review and also subscribe to the podcast, that would be greatly appreciated. If you think you would be a great guest or if you have a friend or an acquaintance you think would be a great guest or guest for the 127fit podcast, Or if you're also interested in sponsoring the 127 Fit Podcast, please send me an email or give this email out. And that email is 127fit at gmail.com. And another huge favor I just ask of you guys, if you are, which I know you are, finding value in a specific episode or episodes of the 127 Fit Podcast, if you take that episode or episodes and share it on your Facebook and Instagram stories, using the hashtag be someone to follow that would be super cool the more you guys share the more people are going to listen and be positively impacted and that's definitely the name of of the game that's 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 my passion is that people would be positively impacted out there in the world um, through the stories that my guests are are sharing and then per the usual i will leave you with proverbs twenty four ten, which states if you faint In the day of adversity, your strength is small. This time until next time, I will catch you guys later.